Hello and welcome to the Temple of Enlightenment International Spiritual Center. My name is Isakar Bay and I want to thank you for tuning in on this great Sunday. I am the senior director and the founder of this great, great organization and I want to tell you how much we appreciate and thank all of you for tuning in every week. I want to thank you also for your comments, for your feedback, for the emails, also for the fun, for the financial um, contributions and the seeds that have been sown into this great ministry, and we want to say thank you. Um, I have a lot to cover today as we continue on our series, Money Manifestation Mindset, and I'm excited about this because we are opening up new dimensions, new levels in people's lives, allowing them to get their minds right. And when you get your mind right, guess what? Your money becomes right. And when your money becomes right, we understand that money answers all things. You will start to see the shape and the form of things in your life begin to change. But everything starts off with the mind. Um, I'm going to be in, in kind of integrating some things in today that I think is necessary um, and, and like I said, it's, it's, it's up to you guys whether you want to utilize the tools or utilize the things that I will be implementing today. And so uh, we really look forward to that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, please take a, get in a comfortable place, get relaxed, let us tap in and uh, get ready for our spiritual mind treatment as we get centered, as we get settled, getting ready to lock in because we want to make sure that we are locked in with divine mind, that we are connected to source. And so we want to make sure that we are in the right place at the right time and, and, and in, in the conference, in the circumference of like-minded people. And so take a deep breath, inhale, and exhale. Take another deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Once again, inhale. And exhale. In the realm of infinite possibilities, I recognize that the illusion of lack of money is merely a construct of the human mind. Today I choose to transcend this illusion and align myself with the truth of abundance that permeates the universe. I acknowledge that the creative power of the, of the divine is ever-present and limitless. There is no scarcity in the universe, only an abundance of opportunities waiting to be embraced. I realize any thoughts or beliefs that penetrate the illusion of lack or open myself to the infinite flow of abundance. I affirm and declare that I am a child of the universe, discovering of all the blessings it has to offer. I divinely support and I divinely support it and guide it in all aspects of my life, including my financial well being. I release any feelings of unworthiness or limitation and embrace my inherent right to experience abundance in all areas, including money. I recognize that money is a form of energy, a tool that can be used to support and enhance my spiritual journey. I shift my perspective from scarcity to abundance, knowing that the universe is always conspiring in my favor. I trust in the divine plan and allow money to flow effortlessly into my life. I release any, any attachment or dependency on the external circumstances for my financial security and happiness. I understand that true abundance comes from within, from a deep connection with the divine source of all that is. I cultivate a mindset of gratitude and containment, knowing that I am already blessed with an abundance of spiritual richness. I affirm that I am the co-creator of my reality, and I choose to create a life of abundance and prosperity. I align my thoughts, beliefs, and actions with the truth of abundance, knowing that as I focus on the positive and embrace a mindset of abundance, I attract more into my life. 
I am open to receiving and allowing the universe to manifest my desires in divine timing. I release any fear or worry about money and replace it with faith and trust in the divine plan. I let go of the belief that there is a limited supply of money and instead embrace the belief that that there is an infinite supply available to me. I am open to new opportunities, ideas, and avenues through which money can flow into my life. I affirm that I am a conscious steward of money, using it wisely and responsibly. I make choices that align with my values and contribute to the greater good of all. I give generously and I joyfully, knowing that as I share my blessings, I create a space for more abundance to flow into my life. I release this spiritual mind treatment into the universal intelligence, knowing that it is already done. I surrender to the flow of abundance and trust that the illusion of lack dissolves in the presence of divine truth. I am grateful for the abundance that is already manifesting in my life and the infinite possibilities that are yet to come. And so it is, and so it is. Once again, if you're just tuning in to the Temple of Enlightenment International Spiritual Center, I am Issachar Bay. If this is your first time listening in, please uh, put your city, your state, the country that you're listening from. Also, we do ask that you do like, share, and uh, also subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, Thank you for all the likes. The likes help us with the algorithms. It helps us to be seen. It helps us to... um, push our message and our channel out so that more people can see it. So the more likes we get, the more we are able to expand. Uh, So we appreciate that. Today we're talking about the illusion of lack. We're talking about the illusion of lack. We're still in our series, Money Manifestation Mindset. We're still working on those principles of being a mental alchemist because we believe that we can take the thoughts, the ideas, the concepts that we have in our mind and we can transform them into becoming our physical reality. So we call ourselves mental alchemists. Um, uh, Alchemists can take gold and silver and it it can take steel and transform it into metal, uh, into gold and silver and the precious metals. We can do the same thing with our thoughts with the concepts in our minds. We can do the same things. We can, but, but I want to talk about the illusion of lack because I believe that we live in a world where people believe that there's a lack, that there's a limitation, that there's a scarcity, that it's not enough. And I believe that that's a false illusion. That's an illusion that has been, uh, I believe, impregnated in the subconsciousness of our minds. I believe that the illusion of lack is something that has been uh, impregnated into us through movies, through music, through film, through television, or, or and now through social media. So there's so many different avenues. Now, those of you that have been following us, um, I would I would suggest you go back and and listen to our series on mental alchemy. Uh, the nine, uh, uh, the what I think it was mental alchemy, the nine levels of mental ascension. You go on this YouTube channel and you go through those nine levels because in there we teach you how to block out the things that will cause you to see the illusions. It, it shows you how to work with that. Now, now, just before we get started, I just want to make this clear. Those of you who were listening last week, we talked, I I had you guys do a few things. Number one, I I said that everybody should go start a business. Whether you know what you want to do, whether you don't know what kind of business you want to start, just come up with a name and and, and begin to start a business. Now, I'll tell you this. Um, I told some of you, if you didn't want to go ahead and just do the full LLC, you can go do a DBA. So you can do, uh, uh, my name was James. Strong. I would do James Strong is doing business as uh, Temple of Enlightenment International Spiritual Center. 
And so whatever you want to start, there's a reason why I'm telling everybody you need to start thinking in this avenue. Everybody needs to start moving or having a concept of the entrepreneurial uh, mindset. Rather right now you know exactly what you want to do or you don't want to do, uh, meditate on it. But everybody should at some point in the near future go and just get the paperwork done of having a, their own business. Number two, um, one of the things that we talked about last week was um, everybody taking the time to write down every company, everything that you use, the toothpaste, the deodorant, the kind of phone that you have. When you fly, what airline do you fly? What kind of car do you drive? Um, what kind of clothes do you wear? What kind of detergent do you use? Um, what fast food restaurants do you eat? Uh, what money, what bank do you put your money in? Write down all these things. Why? Because these are companies we're talking about that we can invest in. These are companies that we can actually become owners of. We can actually own the companies that we use. Everybody uses Amazon. Everybody Googles, right? So, so these are companies. Everybody watches Netflix. Everybody watches Amazon Prime, right? So, so these are companies that we can invest in that we can become owners of, right? Uh, and so in the description today, when you take a chance, I want to I wanna go over a few things real quick. Number one, um, Ms. Wells, who's a great contributor to this community, has, is, in a, is in a group called the Equity Channel. And I have a link down there that you can click on. It's on uh, Clubhouse. Uh, Clubhouse is an app that you can download for free. And what happens is when you download the app for uh, Clubhouse, this particular uh, group is on there, which is the equity channel, and they do a lot of teaching about stocks, about how to analyze stocks, about what's, how, to, how to differentiate if a stock is good. And so those of you that are interested in learning more about stocks and really getting a good in-depth knowledge about the stock market and all of those things, tap into that channel. And this is audio only. So you can actually download the app, uh, join the group. Now, I went into the group, uh, and you can actually go and listen to some of the old, um, some of the old uh, broadcasts that they have already done. They have them available where you can click on it and listen to. So I would recommend, you know, that's something that you can do. Also, um, like I said, there's some audio. So you can be cleaning in the house, doing other stuff while you're listening to it. I just think that it's a great asset for you guys to just start getting in tune with that because we're conditioning our minds to start being uh, wealth generators. We're conditioning our minds to be money magnets. And so these are the concepts. There's a lot of things we're going to go over today. Number two, uh, there's an app that I have in the description called Webull, W-E-B-U-L-L. -L. This app is an app that you download on your phone, and it's good for Androids and iPhones. And what you can do is you, you can use this app to actually start buying stocks in the stock market. Now, the reason why I'm going with Webull is because those of you who are not ready to jump into the stock market this app allows you to paper trade, which means that they allow you, they will give you a million dollars of play money, and they will allow you to, to jump in the stock market and play around with the money to get used to how does it feel to buy stocks and how does it feel to sell and buy stocks. And, uh, you know, and this is real time. So if you're buying Microsoft, whatever Microsoft is at today, uh, was going to be at tomorrow or Monday, that's what you will be able to, to, to uh, play around with just to get an idea and a feel of being in the stock market. But when you're ready to actually do it for real, um, they do have the option for you to go ahead and put money in your account and go ahead and buy the stocks for real. So I just wanted to give you guys the opportunity, those of you that, want, that are very interested or kind of curious about really getting into the stock market and don't really understand it, I'm including uh, the Webull app that you can download for free, the paper money, you, all of that stuff is free. And I'm also putting a video in there that shows you how to get to the free paper money so that you can go ahead and start playing around with it and so forth. So I'm putting that in there uh, because we understand that we no longer want to work for money. We want our money to work for us. And so all of these companies, all of these things that we use, all of these things, the cars we drive, we can actually become part owners. 
those of you that have your money in Chase and Bank of America and Wells Fargo, you can actually own those stocks. So just wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, so in the description, you can just click on that and go ahead and just jump in on that and be a part of that uh, and play around with it. Um, and I think it's great once you get a hang of it to get your children involved. You know, your children love Disney. They love all of these different toys and video games and all these different things that are, they have stocks for those as well. And I just think that it's great if you can start getting your kids to invest in the things that they play with and the things that they like. So this is something good that you may want to take a look at. Now, I also want to take a look at this. Everybody listening to me, your credit should be good. There's no reason. There's no reason that nobody listening to me that your credit should not be great. Now, I'm going to say this. Yes, people have maybe some charge off. You may have an eviction. You may have some late payments. Uh, you may have um, some closed accounts. Whatever you have on your account, guess what? It could be removed. Uh, I started a program called Credit Cure back last year where um, – you know, I put I, I made it available for people who wanted to jump on it. It's in the description. Now, listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing consultations only for those people who tap in from this link through YouTube. And what I'm going to do is we're going to work individually because everybody has a different situation. Whatever your situation is, we will work on it. I will I will give you the paperwork, the letters that you need to remove the stuff that you need to remove. Um, so when you get a consultation with me, you're getting a consultation. The letters and everything are included. So I, whatever, if you need charge off, if you need late fees, you got hard anchories that need to be removed, uh, we look at your credit profile. We'll get some stuff situated. I will give you everything you need. So within the next 30 to 90 days, everybody should be working on their credit. Everybody should be working on getting their credit uh, good. Some of you um, – some of you may say, well, I got a 750 score, but yeah, but what does your credit profile look like? Do you have a good mix? Do you have uh, multiple credit cards? Do you have any kind of loans, car notes, mortgages? You know, different, is there a credit mix? There's certain things that a profile needs to be, you know, so everybody needs to, 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 to actually make sure. The reason why I'm saying this is because if we're going to be moving in a position of becoming money, uh, Manifest the uh, money manifestation mindset. Uh, we got to make sure that everything is 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 in decency and order all the way across the board. So if I'm going to get my mind right about money, then I need to get everything else right, which is my credit, my name. And so I think that we all should be in a position uh, to where we can actually utilize that. Um, and so some of you may have high utilization. Talk to me. We we can, we can put some stuff together. You know, so I, I think that you just need to be in a position to where we're utilizing our, our goals and really doing things. Could you imagine if everybody in your family, your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your brothers, your sisters, everybody had a 750 credit score and they were able to get $200,000 in credit? Could you imagine what we can do as a family, as a unit? Do you, do you know what we can accomplish? It's all comes about mindset. And so that's why I tell you, you know, becoming a millionaire starts by your daily habits. It starts by your daily routines. What I do today will determine what happens tomorrow. And so I want to be in a position to where I begin to understand. So listen, if you want to get a consultation with me, uh, everything is private, it's confidential between me and you. Uh, you let we, we get your, a copy of your credit report. We find out what's on there. Uh, you know, we get stuff removed. Make sure your addresses, all your information is updated. You know, we go through the whole shebang. I, I tell you what you need to do, all the quote-unquote little secrets that I've learned over the last year and a half, two years. So, like I said, um, I'm going to share with you the information. So keep this in mind. You're going to do the work. I'm just going to show you what to do and how to do it 
but you're going to do the work. So keep that in mind. You're, you're going to have to invest some time and, and, and really understand this because I'm going to give you stuff to study. I want to give you stuff to read. I don't just want you to do what I tell you to do. I want you to understand why you're doing what you're doing. What does the law say? And we are abiding by the law. And this is what Congress says about credit. And this is what con- Congress says about the consumer. And this is what happens. And, th- and what do we do if this happens? What if you do if that doesn't happen? What happens if the credit bureau doesn't remove my charge off? What happens if the company doesn't remove my late payment? These are the things that we need to know. So I just want to make sure that we are equipped and that we do have everything in order and that when we talk about moving and money manifestation mindset, that we are in the right place at the right time and our mindsets are at one. And so take the time this afternoon when we're done with this and just look in the description. There's a lot of great things down there. Um, I'm still doing the clips readings uh, over this big eclipse. I probably did more eclipse readings than I did for New Year's Eve, which is amazing to me because, you know, you would think people would want to know what's going to happen in 2024. But after that eclipse, the 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 lives has been is been flowing so you know a lot of people have been coming for those eclipse meetings which i think is great because you need to know how this eclipse is going to affect you what's going to happen you need to know all of these things so um i i think it's imperative that that we look at those things and as you can see after the uh um after the eclipse it just seems like all kind of stuff is happening so many people are dying just all kind of stuff right so I just wanted to get that out um, very quickly so you can govern yourselves accordingly. Now, uh, when I was in college, I had the opportunity of studying a professor by the name of William Glasser. William Glasser was an American psychiatrist and a psychologist. And he developed something called the choice theory. I thought it was very fascinating to me because the choice theory um, was something that I automatically believed because I believe that we create our own reality. I believe that uh, we are not victims, uh, but we are volunteers. So what I mean by that is everybody listening to me, whatever you're going through in your life right now, guess what? You volunteered for it. You, you're not a victim, but you're a volunteer. Nothing happens by mistake. Nothing happens by accident. We choose our joys and our sorrows long before we experience them. And so William Glasser, he created this theory called the choice theory. He believed that human behavior is driven by the need to satisfy these five needs, survival, love, belonging, power, freedom, and fun. He he believed that 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 the human being does goes by what they need, and based on what they need, they will make the choices that they think or that they want to make. And so, based on the choices that they make, they create their own reality. He believed that people are responsible for their own choices, and that they have the power to make positive changes in their lives. Right, he 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 really ex- a, 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 he really he really honed in on the ability and on the connotation that people's personal relationships, their personal responsibility, self evaluation are important in achieving happiness and fulfillment. Now, the reason why I'm going through this is because. Everything in life is about choice. It's a choice. I I often believe when when some of you this afternoon would download that Webull app, I will say that the, the, the app, the only thing you can do is buy and sell stocks. You can't do none of the fancy stuff like options or buying futures. I don't even think it lets you do EFTs. Some of you don't even know what that means. You will later on. Um, but life is about buying and selling. People sell you what they want you to have or what they want you to think or what they want you to believe, and you either buy it or you don't. But then again, you sell people what you want them to believe, and they either buy it or they don't. Life is about buying and selling. If you're not 
selling than you're buying. They sold us the reason why we can't achieve and we can't succeed, and you bought it. They sold us the reason why we can't be millionaires and we can't be wealthy and we can't succeed in life, and we bought it. But we never realized that we had the opportunity to sell the reason why we can and sell the reason why we will become millionaires and will achieve and succeed, buying and selling. He believes that the human being has a need that drives their human behavior. He believes that your human behavior is what allows you to make the choices that you make in life. Sometimes you can look back over your life and say, you know what, when I made that decision, I wasn't in the right place. Not that you was in the right place. You didn't have the knowledge. You didn't have the wisdom. But because you made the choices that you did, it allowed you to get to the place where you do have the wisdom and the knowledge of what you need to do and what you don't need to do. I don't believe there's no mistakes or accidents. So what you call a mistake is a lesson. What don't kill you can only make you stronger. So what we call mistakes are actually lessons that allows us to uh, move in the direction that we need to move into. He believes this. The five basic needs are survival, which refers to our basic psychological needs, such as water, food, shelter, and safety. Man or woman will make decisions that will govern those things, which we call survival. And some of us will do certain things and will do what we have to do to survive. He talked about love and belonging, right? This relates to our need of social connections, love, acceptance, and a sense of belonging and relationship in com- and communities. Number two, power. Number three, power. This refers to our need of being able to, uh, for achievement, for recognition, and a sense of control over our lives. Number four, he talks about freedom. This relates to our need for independence, Autonomy, the ability to make choices and align with our values and desires, right? Number five, he talks about fun. This refers to our need for enjoyment, pleasure, engaging in activities that brings us joy and satisfaction. I want to ask how many of us will have fun because when I, when, I, when I study this theory, I know people that definitely will make decisions about uh, survival. They will definitely make decisions that can give them some kind of a freedom, maybe the power. Uh, definitely with the love, but what about the fun? Do we actually take time to have fun in life? Do we do things that give us fun, that gives us joy? What's our happy place? Where's the place that you love to go that brings you happiness, that brings you joy? What are some of the things that you like to do that brings you happiness, that brings you joy? Because like I said last week, we're not designed to go to work, to come home, pay bills, to go to work, to come home, pay bills, to go to work, to come home and pay bills. That's not life. When we talk about the illusion of lack, we live in a world where the illusion of lack has been magnified. The illusion of scarcity has been magnified that there's not enough, that everybody can't have and that only certain people can have, and that it's not enough for everybody. So we've been impregnated with this into our subconscious minds. Money on so many different levels we we talked about is the answer of all things, right? But the the materialization of spiritual substance, Money is the symbol of the idea of prosperity. Money is the substance. In the, so substance, the word substance, is in the form of money is given to us for constructive uses. The money idea is good, and it draws us to good when we are functioning in divine order. Reverend Ike says 
that it's not the love of money that's the root of, of all evil, but the lack of money. Why? Because when there's a lack of money, that's where crime is high. Because of the lack of money, not the love. Divine substance becomes man's supply. See, we have to realize that everything on the outside is temporary. And I keep saying this, and I'm going to keep saying it until it's woven into your subconscious mind, that everything in the outer world is always temporary. But that which is inwardly is always going to be eternal, the invisible realm, the invisible supply. When we talk about becoming money magnets and we're talking about having a money manifestation mindset, what we're talking about is always being able to manifest and allow money to flow into our lives, flow in and out of our lives. Why? Because money is currency. Currency is designed to flow. Our consciousness is our only currency. And so you never want to get connected to what you see outside of yourselves. Because that's temporary. And you never get out of life what you want. You only get out of life what you are. You only get out of life what you are. What you are. Not what you want. Not what you think you are. Not what you're going to have. Not what you hope you should get. You only get out of life what you want. Which you are. So anybody in your life right now and you're not getting anything that you want or you're not getting what you think you deserve in life and you're not happy with your life right now, it's a direct indication that you're not walking in your I amness. You're not becoming the thing that you want. You want security. You want financial stability. Then you have to become that. You can't want it. You have to become that. And we are utilizing the steps. So that's why we're getting you into understanding about stocks, investments, getting you in, in, uh, getting you connected with getting your credit together. Because I will show you how you can use credit and how the rich use credit in unbelievable ways that you would not imagine. It's all about knowledge, but I, we can't go to the higher levels if we have not removed the money blocks and removed the different things, the concepts and the, 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 the illusion of lack that has been thrown on us and allowed us to embrace it. So we got to be able to, to, to break away from the chains. I've always said the only limitations in life we're ever going to face is the, is, the, is the limitation in our mind. That's the only limitation that we will ever face. And so once we do those things, you you will begin to understand and see that, that nothing that you put your mind to you can't achieve, that nothing that you're trying to accomplish will be able to be stopped. The only person that can stop you is you. You know, I always tell people like this. We are talking about creating money. Now, we have to be, we have to have common sense. And what I mean by common sense is, yes, we're talking about manifesting money. We're talking about manifesting wealth. We're talking about all of that. But listen, the money is not going to fall out of the sky because the money is already here on earth. All the money we need on, in the, in the, on the tangible realm is already here. So money is not falling out of the sky. That's why I always say this. If any if anybody's going to ask for money, don't look for an angel from the skies to bring it to you on a golden platter. But keep your eyes open. Guess what? Because there's going to be some ideas and opportunities that will be presented to you that will allow you to receive and those different streams of income that will come to you. Now, I I believe here that everybody listening to me, at some point, you should put between $500 and $1,000 to the side, whether you want to put it in your savings. And I believe that that $500 or $1,000 
is what you should use to start allowing money to work for you. You should start putting it in the stock market, start putting it into investments so that you can start allowing your money to work for you. Some of these companies are dividend playing companies. So what that means is every month or every quarter, they pay all of their investors, they pay them a dividend. And what we can do is do what's called compound interest, which means that we just keep it rolling over. We, the money that those dividends we get, we just roll it back over into it and we just keep going. We just keep. And so we're allowing our money to circulate. We're allowing our money to work for us. We're, le we're learning how to analyze a stock. We're, we will learn how to analyze a company. We will learn how to look at certain things. Why? Because our mindsets are changing and we are getting really focused on how money could work for us. And we realize that, wait a minute, I don't have to work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week for this little chump change when I can actually get my money to work for me and make me more money in less time. Money was designed to work for us, not us work for money. The only treasure that's worth saving are the treasures that we lay up in the heavens of our mind. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. But your mind is the heavens, the intangibles. Where have you laid your treasure? Do not lay your treasure on earth where it can rot and it can be stolen and it can be taken away from you, but you want to lay it up in heaven, which is in your mind, your subconsciousness so that it can never be taken from you. You can never lose it because it's intangible. Your treasures are always intangible. They're never tangible. And so when you're able to uh, move in the intangible realm, that's where your supply is. There's no lack in the intangible world. Uh, there's no scarcity in the intangible world. And so we want to create multiple streams of income, multiple streams of income. We want to create multiple opportunities, businesses. We want to create things for our family. We want to be able to have our whole family uh, work together. We can create what's called ecosystems of, of, of families that can come together and invest in each other. And as a family, we have a family business dynamic where we invest in each other's businesses, where percentages of each business comes back into the into the middle uh, for the family business. I mean, it's it's a powerful thing when all of us can get together. But we have to have the mindset to understand the the, the systematic way of how we need to change our perception of how we look at money. I talked about this last week. We don't need another job. Yes, I, I, the person listening could be like, I'm struggling. You know, I'm trying to make ends meet. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'm robbing Paul to pay Peter. Yeah, I understand. But you getting another job doesn't change, the, doesn't change that situation because the reason you're in a situation is not because you don't have the money. You're not doing what you need to do with the money. The organization, the structuring of how you operate and use the money is the issue. So what we really need is the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge of what to do and how to, and how to structure and operate my financial uh, 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 profile or my financial uh, situation of what to do with the money that I do have. What's my daily routine? Because you are what you eat. And what are we eating? When I say eating, I'm not talking about physically eating, but what are we eating? How many books have we read this year already? And we're almost into the half of the year. It was this January yesterday, and we're already in April. We'll be in June before you know it. We'll be halfway through the year. Are we eating subconsciously watching Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO Max? Apple TV, 
right? Or are we, what, what are we eating? What are we ingesting into our minds and our subconscious minds? Because remember, we, we can only manifest what we are. So if, if I want to be a money magnet, I got to start operating in money. I got to start operating how does money flow? How does money move? I, I got to be able to really get an understanding of how I want to move and operate. But on the foundational level, there's some things that I need to, I need to get in my mindset. I need to know that there's no lack. There's no scarcity. There's no lack. There's no, there's, there, there, there is no scarcity. The illusion of lack arises from the, this, from the distorted perception of reality. True wealth is not found in the acclamation of material possessions, but rather in the cultivation of wisdom, knowledge, and moral character. I've always said this. My definition of a person who's rich is a person who has a lot of money. My definition of somebody who's wealthy is their ability to fund their own dreams. The wealthy has the ability to fund their own dreams. We have to rid ourselves of the dangers of becoming enslaved by our own desires and material wealth. That's why it's very crucial that we really start putting a plan together. And I think everybody should put a financial plan together. Now, when I say financial plan, it doesn't have to be a number. It doesn't have to be, oh, I need to make six figures this year. But I think when I say financial plan is that we need to start taking a look at really how we move and operate with our finances. And uh, we need to start looking at uh, ways that we can make our money work for us instead of us working for our money. How much money do we waste? on stuff that's frivolous, that we could have took that money, that 50 that $100, that two $300, and we could have put it in, and it could have been working for us right now. You know, um, we just had, uh, uh, I can't think of it what stock it was. Um, there's a few stocks that just split uh, recently. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, some of you may not want to do uh, stock market. You may want to get into real estate. You may want to get into uh, tax deeds. Those, there's so many different things that you can invest in that you can uh, work with. Some of you can get into art. There is a website. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I am invested in it. It's a website for paintings. And you can invest like in the Mona Lisa, like the real Mona Lisa. You can invest in it. And if somebody buys it or sell it, you get a percentage of it. Uh, I will have that for you next week. I can't think off the top of my head what it is, but it's a phenomenal website. And it has, like, all the greatest paintings that you could think of, all the great painters, the Leonardo, the, the Leonardo da Vinci's, and all these great artists. Um, and you can invest whatever. If you want to put $100 in, $200, $20, whatever you want to put in, um, and you as time goes on, you can build up your portfolio of different paintings and different things that you own. And if anybody sells it, then you get a percentage. But there is a um, there is a secret to that. And as we get more into that, I will show you how it's very good to you to get artwork, um, uh, studying the rich and why they buy a lot of art. And it's it's a it's a great asset to have, a great wonderful asset to have. So. Uh, like I said, it is us imperative that we rid ourselves of becoming enslaved by the desires of material gain, material wealth, about what we have, what we look like, what we drive. Uh, you know, um, it's amazing to me how so, I, I'm listening this week, so many of these young girls are dying because they're going to the, the Dominican Republic. They're going to 
uh, all these countries to get a BBL, to get the, their breasts re- uh, lifted. They're going to do all of this cosmetic stuff, and they're dying for what? You're going to get all these enhancements when you haven't made no enhancements from within. The real enhancement comes from within. You changing or getting the cosmetic surgery doesn't change anything because you want the look, because you want the attention, because you want to feel like you belong. I've always said this. If you go outside of yourself to get what you don't, what you think you don't have, that thing now becomes power over you. So now we're running after what we think society wants us to look like or what society accepts. And so you go get those things done and nothing in your life changes because you never changed. You're the same person. The change has to start from within. The change must start from within. When people come to me for a consultation, I tell them I don't care where in the world you move to, Wherever you go, there you will be. You don't change who you are. Who you came into this incarnation as is who you will be. If you no longer want to be a man and you want to be a woman, that's fine. But you're still going to be the same person you are. Nothing changes. Nothing changes of who you are. Your mind. Your mind will always stay the same. Who you came into this incarnation to be from the inside will always be who you are. And so that's why it's imperative that you work from within. It's inside out, not outside in. I think that uh, this illusion of lack, this illusion of scarcity makes us do things and make the choices. That's why I brought up this uh, professor, William Glasser, because a man moves by what he needs. And if he feels like he needs to survive, he will do whatever he needs to do to, to survive. But I, I think that we need to look at that because once we get a, 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 a grasp on life and really who you are, you have to be able to understand and begin to move yourself out of the survival mindset. Because if you're trying to survive, you'll do anything to survive because you're trying to make it to tomorrow. You're trying to make it to next week. But when you understand who you are, you understand that everything you need is, has already been implanted in you and you believe that you can create your own reality, you no longer have to live in the survival mode or the survival mindset. You realize that you create your own reality and you start creating the opportunities that you want to embrace and that you want to happen in your life, you start bringing the opportunities and things to yourself. There is no lack. There is no lack of money. And if there's a lack of money to you, then it means that you have not therefore become the level of money that you want to see in your life. Life will always give to man what he first gives himself. I can't make six figures a year if I never gave myself six figures first. I got to be able to see six figures. I got to walk like six figures. I got to talk like six figures. I got to become six figures. And then it begins to start unfolding in my life. The illusion of lack can be overcome by cultivating a sense of inner containment and detachment. We got to be able to, the, the law of detachment, you got to be able to detach from the material world, the material aspects of what are you driving, what do you have. Some of us, as I said this before, we see these things in the movies and television, on social media, and we get caught up in the emotionalism of the physical things, right? And we go after those things. And when you get them, what do they do? They don't do nothing. What we thought they were going to bring to us, the fulfillment, 
We thought that they were going to make us feel some kind of way. We thought that we were just going to, it was going to enhance us in some kind of way. And when we got the thing, it absolutely did nothing. It didn't do what we thought it was going to do. Everything that's physical is, is, is always going to be temporary. And so if you're operating on the spiritual level, you understand that if I lose everything tomorrow, I can always get it back because I never lost it. You think because I lost it in the physical reality means that I lost it. I never lost it because I already, I already had it in consciousness. I already had it spiritually. I already had it. So it can never be taken from me. Because guess what? Everything that you thought I lost, I, I am that. So it has to come back to me. You only get a life who you are. You only get out of life who you are. So if you're listening to me and you are seeing a lot of drama in your life, a lot of discord, a lot of disruption, you're seeing all those things in your life, it's a direct indication that you need to start working on you, not anybody else, on you. This is not finger pointing time. Oh, it's that person or it's that person. No, it's you. You you change you and watch how your world begins to unfold. As within, so without. And so if you're listening to me and you're saying, I am tired of being broke, I want you to write this in the chat. I will never be broke another day in my life. I will never be broke another day in my life. What I want you to understand is being broke is not about what you have or don't have. Being broke is a mindset. Poverty and prosperity are two sides of the same coin. Being broke is a mindset. Because guess what? You only get out of life what you are. So if you're operating in a poor, in a poverty mindset, that's why you are poor. <laughs> Reverend Ike says the best thing you can do about a poor person is don't be one. Because how can two people, how can two poor people help each other? If I'm poor and you poor, we can't do nothing for each other. The best thing you can do to a poor person is don't be one. Why? Because if I'm operating in prosperity and in a money manifestation mindset, guess what? At least I can try to help you to get out of your poverty and move over to the side where I am. And so I have to be in that position because I only get out of life what I am. What am I? You got to ask your question, what, what am I on this day, on this Sunday, what am I? Because I only get out of life what I am. So everything I want to see in my life, I have to become that. Those women on here who want to get their relationships and want to get married, you need to become a wife. You need to start thinking like a wife, acting like a wife. Why? Because you want to get married. You only get out of life what you become. As long as you still operate in the singleness, you are attracting singleness. I want to attract money. I want to attract you become the very things that you want. And we're changing our mindset. That's why we have the things for you to get involved in. Get involved in real estate. Get involved in, in stocks. Get Start learning how to how to paper trade. You, you have a you have a million dollars at your disposal to play around. I'm gonna buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, Google. I'm gonna buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of Amazon. I'm gonna buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of Apple or Facebook. You know, and start and and start understanding how you can make your money work for you. And then once you get a hang of it, you can say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna put a couple dollars together. I'm gonna get in this for real. I'm gonna really start making my money work for me. Right? The same thing with the credit. Your name must be good. Your name must be good. I had a friend of mine who uh, needed to get some funding. And he was 
kind of upset because he was going to a lot of different people, investors, and they wouldn't really giving him the funds that he needed. And I told him, I said, listen, you don't need to go to nobody else. You can create your own reality. You got a good, decent credit score. Go to your bank, go to the business side, and go get you some business, business credit. And that's what he did. You don't have to ask anybody for anything. You don't have to beg anybody for anything. You create your own reality. You are the architect of your own universe. You create your own reality. And so that's why it's imperative that we start moving and operating differently. We start thinking differently. See, when you, when you start operating in a money manifestation mindset, Everything about your life changes. You stop watching the stuff that you used to watch. You have no desire to watch it no more because it don't mean nothing to you. It's not, it's not benefiting you. It's not benefiting you to watch BMF or to watch uh, uh, any of these shows. I don't even know what, what's the shows to watch now, uh, uh, you know, but it doesn't benefit you to watch the power of the BMF or to watch, uh, you know, in, any of these shows on, on regular TV and all of these other shows. What benefits you now is to get information that starts to suppress your desires because now my desires is to become money. So I start watching stuff about money. I start watching videos about money. Now, what's going to happen is as you move into the realm of becoming more, uh, uh, thinking more monopolized way, more about money and more about operating in commerce and currency, right, you're going to find your own lane. So, for instance, you're going to find your own groups that you may want to study with. You're going to find your own people that you want to follow, and that's great. But the thing about it is you got to make sure you start somewhere and be consistent in what you're doing. Why? Because the art of becoming a millionaire starts in your everyday routines. What am I doing every day? What am I doing every day that's going to determine my tomorrow? Where do I see myself five years from now? Where do I see myself 10 years from now? You know, many of us are saying to ourselves, you know what? I want to travel this year. I want to go on a trip. I would love to go to Europe. I would love to go to Africa. I would love to go to all these different places. And the first thing that you are saying is, yeah, I want to go, but I can't afford it. Why can't you afford it? You're the only one that can stop you. But you know what? There was this guy on on YouTube, and he started teaching people how to get their credit together. He started teaching people how to have a money mindset manifestation. And you know what? Oh, man, if I would have kept going and listening to him, I could have had the resources that I needed to do the things I needed to do. We create our own reality. And it's difficult because uh, many of y'all are listening to me right now and you're saying to yourself, you know what, I do need to clean my credit up. My credit ain't really all what it needs to be. But you won't do nothing. You won't do nothing at all. You can just keep doing what you're doing and don't realize the potential that you really have because you feel like it's so difficult. You feel like, oh, I don't really want to deal with that. But if you're going to move in a money mindset, yes, you want to do that because that's another avenue that can open to you and really show great opportunities and great streams of income that can help you out to do the things that you need to do. It can put you in a wonderful place. You got to realize life is a game and you don't play games to lose. You play games to win. And if you're going to win in the game of life, then you got to play to win. When people come to me for a consultation and what I tell them, I show them the hand they were dealt. Everybody in life was dealt a hand. Whether your hand is good or bad, doesn't matter. I show you the hand that you were dealt. And I show you how to play that hand to win. Because life is a game. You got to play the game. 
We got to get out of the audience and get on stage. We got to become players in the game of life. You got to start operating in your potential and in your purpose, your destiny. Money is just a tool that we're using in the physical realm. But we are, on the spiritual level, we are money. You can say to yourself, I am the coin of every realm. You can also state that when people say, how much money do you have? You say to them, oh, I don't have money. I am money. Why, why would you say that? Well, you know, I don't like to say that I have anything because anything that I have on the physical realm is a temporary. So I just like to say that I am money because as long as I am money, there is no uh, <laughs> there there is no origin, there is no beginning or end. I'm, I just am what I am. So I don't like to say that I have money. I just like to say that I am money. Because when I operate in that level of consciousness, when I operate in that level, what happens is I realize that on the spiritual level, I'm in the I'm in the currency, in the consciousness of currencies. That consciousness is my only currency. You start to see things differently. You start to watch things and see the money in it. You start to look at things and realize how things are. What happens is, I'm telling you, is you get more into this your life will begin to change. Those of you that start working with your credit, you'll see a lot of doors opening up. Um, I'm telling you, when you have good credit, the windows of heaven open up to you. They treat you like you would never believe. So I'm, I'm telling you, you definitely want to start getting yourself together, getting your credit together, getting, getting your mindset together, getting your, to get in the position. Some of us don't need a lot of work. Some of us may need a little work. But you gotta put the effort into it. You gotta you gotta be in the now. You gotta do it now. You can't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Right? Credit uh, with the credit, everything happens in thirty days, you know? You pay your bill every once a month. So everything happens in thirty day increments. So there's no greater time to jump on right now. We're well, today is the uh, what are we at? We're at the, the the 14th. So we got to put ourselves in a position to win. And so I just want to let you guys know that check the bottom description, description of this, uh, of this teaching. Everything you need is there. Play around with the Weeble. Uh, definitely go to the... Um, the the equity channel uh clubhouse group uh become a member join join uh clubhouse anyway they have a lot of good stuff on there i was actually thinking about doing some stuff on clubhouse too um then you also have um i have another video on there about how to how to analyze a stock how to determine if a stock is good or not uh i have a gentleman that i like to follow um you can take a look at him he might be a little too uh you know for you, you you know, but I, you know, I just put the people that I like. Um, and then also, like I said, those of you that want to get your credit fixed, now is the time. Don't put off. No matter what you got, some of you got all kind of stuff on there. Listen, it's time to get removed. You don't have to wait seven years. I know some of you, will, I'm wait seven years and it'll fall off. You don't have to wait seven years. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We can remove it today. So I think that you need to get yourself in a position to win, get yourself in a position to see your family uh, really work and do the things that you need to do um, and really start enjoying life. You know, when I look at William Glass's choice theory, as I told you guys before, you know, the one thing I don't see people having in life is I don't see people having fun. I don't see people enjoying their lives and going out I see a lot of people going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home, paying bills, and that's it. They're in survival mode. We want to move out of survival mode, and we want to thrive. We want to live. 
We don't want life to live us. We want to live life. I don't want to live reactionary anymore. I don't want to react to everything that happens. I want life to react to me. When I start making my demands and making things and telling life how I want to live, I want life to respond to me, not me respond to life. So I got to put myself in that position. And the only way I can put myself in that position is to become the very thing that I want to be. There is an illusion of lack. There is no lack in this world. There is no lack of money. There is no lack of love. There is no lack of anything. The only lack you will ever experience is the lack in your own mind. Lack is the boogeyman. There is no lack. And as soon as you can detach from that and pull away from that, you'll start to see your life move in a different direction. You'll start to see, see some of y'all, when you start getting your credit fixed and you start really start, you know, playing around, some of you may start playing around with the, with the Webull app and just start getting into the mindset of moving around and really getting into a money consciousness, you'll even see some of your friends and some of the places that you used to go, you don't have a desire to go anymore. You don't have a desire to do those things anymore because you're moving in a different direction. You're, you, you're seeing your life unfold. Guess what? You start you start habitating, uh, you start uh, uh, magnetizing other people to you. They often say that your friends are a resume of what you're going to become. So if that, in fact, is true and you start getting your credit right, you start getting into stocks and investments, you start changing your money mindset, the people that you hang around fall off now because you're no lo- they can no longer uh, uh, succumb to who you are because your mind expanded. So now your friends change because your friends are a resume of what you're going to become. So now you start attracting people that got good credit. You start attracting people that make money. You start And you start elevating. Hey, I used to hang out with people that made $100,000 a year. Now I'm at $100,000 a year. Now I'm hanging out with people that make two hundred fifty and a half a million dollars a year. Now I'm at a half a million dollars a year. Why? Because your consciousness your consciousness has expanded. And because your consciousness expanded, now your friends are a resume of what you're going to become. All of your friends make a half a million dollars a year. It's impossible for you to not make a half a million dollars a year. Impossible. You only get out of life what you are. So we got to take heed to this, and we got to start operating in this, and we got to start moving in this, and we got to start constantly allowing ourselves to keep going and, 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 and really moving into this kind of mindset. And so that's why we're going into this, because I think that it's vital for this year. This year of 2024 is a manifestation year. I talked about it all last year. I talked about the number eight. If you add two plus zero plus two plus four, it gets eight. It gives you the number eight. The number eight in numerology is the number of manifestation. It's the number of money. It is the number of financial uh, attainment. We talked about how uh, if you go to any of the Chinese stores or the Chinatown or the Japanese or the Koreans, they have the number eight hanging up everywhere. Ask the Japanese or Chinese what the number eight means. They tell you, oh, we hang it up because it's, it's, it's money. It means money. It manifests. It brings money. It's a magnet for money. The number eight. And so that's why we're in the position that we're in. So I don't want to hold you guys too long. Thank you for tuning in to this week's teaching uh, on the illusion of lack. Please govern yourselves accordingly in the description of the different things that you, different tools and assets that you guys have. If you guys want to get consultations with me, go ahead and put them in so we can get together and uh, start working on getting your credit where you need to be. And we can start making some moves. Also, those of you, start working on your businesses. What what kind of business do you want to start? Um, you know, um, what do you want to do? You know, um, what did you always have a desire to do? What What do you think that you, what do you think your gift or your talent is? You know, um, guess what? If, if somebody says, well, I don't really know 
um, uh, what I really want to do. Make your name a business. Take your name and make it into a business. So we have to start moving into the entrepreneurship, and that's be the next one we're moving to after we get out of this money mindset uh, teaching. But I, I want to show you guys how creating a business will open up the doors and the other streams of income. So just trust me. Just walk with me. I'm taking you somewhere. I'm not going to lead you astray. Um, but I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Once again, if you were listening to this channel for the first time, please let us know what city, what state, what country you're listening from. Please like, share, and also subscribe to this channel. Um, we operate in circulations. We ask every week, we ask everybody if you can to sow or donate a $26 seed. If you would like to sow a seed or donate into this organization, we ask everybody to donate $26. Some of you have sown more than $26. If you feel like you want to sow more than $26, you feel like this has been a blessing to you, definitely feel free to do that. Some of you may say, well, I don't have the $26. Whatever it is that you have on your heart, go ahead and go ahead and sow it. Go ahead and donate it. Uh, we are 100% appreciative of all the financial uh, seeds or financial donations that you guys give. Um, there are four ways that you can donate and sow into this ministry. Number one is our cash app, which is going to be dollar sign T O E S C. Um, once again, that's dollar sign T O E S C. That's for cash app for, um, PayPal and Zelle. We're going to use our email. Our email is info I N F O at T-O-E-S-C dot org. Once again, if you're going to be doing PayPal or Zelle, you can use our email, which is going to be info at T-O-E-S-C dot org. All of this is also in the description as well. So if you want to look in the description, all the ways you can give is down there. Uh, then we also have Venmo. If you guys want to use Venmo, our Venmo is going to be Issachar Bay. It's going to be I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R. B E Y at gmail dot com. Once again, that's going to be Issachar Bay I S S A C H A R B E Y at gmail dot com, and that's for Vimo. If you guys want to use Vimo, um, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, please give me your feedback. We've been getting feedback all week. Um, once again, like I said, I am open for the credit cure consultations. If you want to uh, schedule a consultation with me, it's going to be 90 minutes, and it will go with all of the – it will include the letters that you need, which is a steal. Because if you need three letters, I'll give you the three letters. I'm not going to just – you know, so I'm, I'm letting you know this is a steal because I was going to sell the letters by themselves, and the letters are by themselves will, are going to be way more than the consultation. So I'm letting you know. For only those who are on this call, who are listening this, listening to this, that will just be for you guys, if your family and your friends or whoever you think needs help with their credit. You can go ahead and set up a consultation, uh, no matter what you have on your credit, late payments, charge-offs, evictions, uh, uh, hard inquiries, whatever it is that you have, uh, medical bills, all that stuff. Just like I said, it all could be removed. Um, so like I said, there's no reason why we can't be where we need to be. The only person that can stop us is us. So once again, um, I want to say this one thing, your destiny is not a matter of chance, but it's a matter of choice. I want you guys to know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.